Embark on a voyage of discovery with your family with Celestron's best-selling Power Seeker Equatorial Mount Telescopes. These telescopes come with everything you need to get started with astronomy, including a tripod, a finder scope, two eyepieces, and a Barlow lens, which triples the power of each eyepiece. The equatorial mount is a favorite of amateur astronomers because it makes it easier to track objects as they appear to move across the night sky. Choose the optical tube that's right for you, from the compact Power Seeker 60 EQ with grab-and-go convenience to the large Power Seeker 127 EQ with more light-gathering ability. Every Power Seeker offers great views of the moon and planets. A larger model will provide more detailed views and help you enjoy fainter deep sky objects like star clusters and nebulae. When you're out under the stars, use Celestron's free Sky Portal mobile app for iOS and Android to locate objects in the night sky. Center the object in the finder scope and it's ready to view. As you observe, listen to Sky Portal's audio descriptions for the most popular objects. Happy stargazing! Hey guys, this is Spencer, and we're going to do a review, demo, really talk through uh, your purchase of a, I don't even know how to pronounce it, Skyker <laughs> uh, telescope. And uh, we'll kind of talk about who this telescope is for, who it's not for. Uh, we'll go over some information that you need to know, especially if you're buying your first telescope. And then we'll actually kind of show you what the telescope can see. Uh, so the first thing you need to know is this telescope is not for little kids. And that's not to say little kids can't use it. Um, but you can see it comes with a lot of different pieces and stuff like that. And it takes a little bit of work to really refine and find the objects that you're looking for in the sky. And so it's not just a point and shoot telescope where you, you know, set it on a stand, sit there and look, and you can see it immediately. Like it's, it's, uh, it's kind of an entry level to people that are really trying to get into astronomy and they want to go hike out in the mountains, get really clear skies and really see some cool stuff. This is kind of the entry level version of that. Now, if you do know a little bit more about what you're talking about, a lot of this information is not available online, but you can see right here, you can pause here and just look, this is all the information you would need to know if you know what you're looking at. Uh, so right there, basically everything you can know as far as what it comes with. Um, some really cool stuff actually, and I really like this telescope and I'll talk about why, um, but it's got a lot of pieces that basically help magnify and help things, uh, help you see things brighter and clearer. And so you can see right here, it comes with a Barlow lens that makes everything you see basically three times more magnified. It comes with what's called a, a zenith mirror and that helps you, well, that just kind of helps in the process of, of things getting to your eye, of the, the image getting to your eye. It's got two different uh, lenses and you can see everything comes in, or sorry, two different um, eyepieces and you can see everything comes with uh, covers. So you can cover, um, that's not the lid there, the lid goes right here. So everything can get covered up, kept nicely. Uh, everything here has a cover. You can see everything is, is kept in a cover. And then it comes with a case, so you can put it in there, as well as the tripod and the main body of the telescope. It also has what's called a finder scope, and that's uh, something you put on there, and it'll help you uh, find stuff in the sky. Because sometimes the telescope is so zoomed in, you can't find the star you're looking for or something. And that finder scope will help you kind of see a broader view of what the tell of basically where the telescope is pointing at. So it's got a lot of stuff. It only takes about five to seven minutes to set up. We'll set it up here, and then we'll kind of talk through a few more pieces. Uh, but like I said, this is a. Uh, this is a great entry level telescope, not necessarily for your six year old to kind of stick in their window and, and point out and, and look at things every once in a while. But what I think really sets this one apart from some of the other ones that we've purchased and have online is this stuff right here. And this is what is going to make it, and I'll kind of show you the picture real quick before we set it up. This is what is gonna make it so that you can use your smartphone and get pictures, which is what we really wanna do when we see cool things like this, right? We wanna be able to take a picture of it. And so it's got accessories that you can use, and then you can have a, a remote shutter here, and you can set it up so that you can take pictures of what you're seeing, which is awesome. So that's probably my favorite feature of this. All right, so overall setup took me about five to seven minutes. You can see everything kind of cinches into place with these little uh, screws right here. I've got everything in. I'm using the best magnification I can right now. We're gonna go outside and look in just a minute. Um, but I'll just kind of talk about real quick the how the phone thing works. And so you can see right here, this is the phone and it essentially just grabs around the back of the phone. And then you can see it's got a rotator. And so it rotates like this, okay? And so you can put any lens, you can put this black part on any lens you want. And then you just rotate it in front of your camera. And then you'll go like this and you'll slip that in instead of the current one. And we'll show you exactly how some pictures look and stuff in a minute. Um, but that's how you would go about 
uh, using your phone with the telescope and seeing it in your phone. All right, so it's the middle of the day. Uh, we'll kind of talk about how it works at night in a minute and just note that the telescope is made for night. So it kind of gets a little oversaturated with light during the day. Then anyway, we're looking at the mountain a couple miles away up there. You can see, uh, can't really see anything on the mountain. That's just, uh, it's pretty far away. But just to kind of show you how it all works here, um, you, you focus manually. So you can go in and out with the focus right here. Uh, I, I didn't put on the, the finder at the top there um, just because we're looking at this stuff. But you could easily put that on there and use that. Uh, and then the way that this phone works, if you want to use the phone, is you can easily just rotate it. I just found something, so I don't want to rotate it off. But essentially, you'll stick the phone right there uh, on there, and you'll rotate the phone right over the hole, and then you'll zoom in just a bit on the phone, and then you can tap on things to kind of zoom in. Now, it's a little out of focus right now, and so what you do, you can see kind of those are pine trees. I don't know if I can get the focus while I'm holding something and while I'm holding the phone in my other hand. But you can see it's way, way out of focus, and I slowly get more in focus, and my a little windy out there's so my hand shaking a little bit but you're kind of getting the idea here of what i can see you can see those are pine trees on that mountain and uh there's a little reflection there and stuff but you can see how zoomed in it is hopefully right there there's those pine trees now my hands are shaking the telescope isn't my hands are <laughs> um but the other other thing you would notice how to keep it is, is what you'll do is you'll take this you'll unscrew it just a bit and that gives you adjustment so you can see you can go up and down now and adjust and then you'll just twist it and that'll tighten it right where it's at so that's how you kind of get it locked in. And then the, the tripod and stand all are pretty secure. Uh, my hand, obviously not secure, but you can see right there, now it's looking at a tree and I can kind of focus in on that tree a little bit if we want. Oh, I think I've gone too far. Now we're looking at a house, <laughs> but I can focus in. You can see right there on the house and it's honestly a lot better looking through the, there you go. Honestly, it's a lot better looking through the uh, actual lens, but pretty cool that you can, you can set your phone up. And if you have the right kind of phone or device, you can set it up to do, uh, to leave the shutter open for a long time. You can capture all kinds of things. And now, as far as what you can see at night, um, I went through like all the reviews because I've never been able to pull it off looking at Saturn. People have said they can see Saturn's rings, but they're very small. So you really have to go out on a clear night. You got to make the telescope, you can use all the magnification you can, and you've got to be very still and kind of patient. And so uh, that's kind of, if you're looking for something as far out as Saturn, I've also seen people take really cool pictures by pointing it at galaxies and stuff and then leaving it for... Uh, leaving their shutters open and stuff for long periods of time on nicer cameras and stuff. Um, but uh, overall, like you're going to be able to see really cool pictures of the moon, anything close, you'll be able to see a better shot of and stuff like that. Um, but, and you'll be able to get pictures of it, which is really cool. Uh, so yeah, uh, really good entry level telescope to take out. It's portable, takes out in the mountains and you can get really good uh, views of cool things, but also actually capture.